Hello and welcome to my channel. We have an interesting little scene today. It's a drawing of a campfire in colored pencil. And it's a good opportunity for me to practice drawing fire. But it also has some elements of landscape, which I always like to do. So I'm going to take you through the drawing process. Let's have a look. I'm going to start with a sketch and my composition is going to be very simple with the campfire in the middle and a bit of background, some trees. It's going to mostly be a darker scene uh, where the campfire is the main focus of this drawing and it's also going to be its most detailed part. Now uh, first I should say a few words about the tools that I'm going to be using, the materials. I'm going to be working on sandpaper, the 1000 grit waterproof sandpaper and the pencils I'm going to use are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. Um, I may use some others but uh, that's usually when I don't have a specific color that I want but it's mostly going to be Faber-Castell. The first thing that I did once I finished the sketch, uh, I started putting down a little bit of bluish tones on the upper portion of the paper because I wanted that sky, that night sky, to be a bit more bluish and I added some blue tones and started blending them uh, but I also added a touch of green as well now I quickly realized that this green, this dark green that I used was a little bit overpowering so I decided to use it sparingly and I added a bit more blue and I kept blending that with a brush. Uh, the difference between sandpaper and regular paper when it comes to colored pencils is that because the material is rough and it grinds down onto the pencil a little bit more it's easier to move the color, to move the pigment around on sandpaper so colored pencils behave quite differently on sandpaper than they do on regular paper. I also decided to add a touch of black especially at the top part of the sky because I wanted to make that a bit darker. This is a night scene after all and I wanted to make all of this just a little bit darker and I kind of like the tone that I achieved eventually. Uh, but uh, like I said that too required a bit more blending with a brush and brushes are pretty good for the smooth blending on this uh, on this surface. I also added a touch of some pinkish color, some pinkish tones uh, at the bottom uh, near the horizon to achieve a nice gradient in color and after that I once I was happy uh, with the appearance of the sky I decided to move on with the trees. So I'm going to have a few trees here uh, mostly just some tall coniferous trees uh, in the background. I don't really need to work on that texture too much. I'm just going to draw some tree-like tall tapering shapes um, and I'm going to try to make them look as convincing and as realistic as possible without actually putting in too much effort and too much detail into them because I don't want this part of the drawing to be too distracting. I'm mostly going to be focusing on that fire. Um, I'm going to be working on these a little bit more with a brush and I mostly used a black color pen uh, black colored pencil for those but I also decided to add a touch of green here and there. Now I don't really know how much this will be visible to you but in real life I can see some of this, these uh, greenish details and I think they look nice. But right now, uh, here as you can see, I'm still working on these branches and these clusters of needles that form around them, so I'm trying to make some nice looking, realistic looking trees. I'm going to provide my reference photo in the description of the video if you want to check that out. And you will see that I made some changes to the reference because I there were some things that I liked and there were things that I wanted to change. Uh, obviously, I normally make changes to any reference photos that I uh, that I use because 
I like to change the composition at least a little bit and I like to introduce some details to make the scene look a little bit better or at least a little bit more to my liking. So here in this case I decided to add a bit more uh, a few more of those trees in the background. I just uh, wanted it to look more like a forest in the night and uh, it's already starting to look as I initially wanted it to but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to make a transition towards this campfire and I'm going to make the background mostly very dark so this is going to be pretty simple because I'm just going to be laying down a lot of black color but later I'm going to add some uh, I'm going to transition into some slightly uh, lighter and warmer tones now on the right side I need to add a few more trees I decided to add two more trees on the right as well and um, I am just refining them a little bit using my blending tools and uh, I'm going to be adding some branches and some some foliage to them as well so so far so good I'm mostly working on the upper portion of the scene the main part of the drawing which is the fire I still really haven't started working on that but so far as you can see I'm creating a pretty realistic nice looking setting without actually putting in too much effort effort and this is really one of the things that I like to do when drawing landscapes I try to create realistic looking scenes uh, without actually um, putting in too much effort and without worrying about every single detail because that's not a very fun way of drawing. Now with the main subject which is the campfire I am going to be a little bit more patient and I'm gonna have to put in a bit more detail into it because after all that will be the focus of my drawing and uh, the rest of the scene is fairly dark so uh, that's where I'm gonna have to uh, be a little bit more careful uh, but I think this whole drawing didn't really take that much time to do after all I am working on a slightly smaller format here I didn't mention that but uh, the size of the paper is around 9 inches in height and about 5 inches in length so a smaller size drawing the kind of that, that I like to do with colored pencils because they are generally a slow medium that's not that good at covering large large pieces of paper but they're very good for smaller detailed drawings I really like drawing miniatures with colored pencils now moving on to the main part of this drawing which is this flame and uh, I have to admit that I don't think I've really done this in colored pencils like ever I've done actually I may have uh, done a drawing of a fire in colored pencil uh, a few times before I'm but it, it was uh, it was a few years ago I've done drawings of fire in graphite and charcoal but this could probably I, I could probably do with a little bit of practice in color now let me explain quickly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a couple of different pencils here. It's mostly going to be this uh, yellowish orange and I didn't have a polychromos one. I had a Faber-Castell color grip one but it doesn't really matter. And in addition to that I'm going to use some uh, yellow and I'm going to use uh, this uh, more reddish orange which is a uh, cadmium orange I think. And, and some others. For some of the lightest portions I may even use a bit of uh, ivory colored pencil which, which is almost like a yellowish uh, white color. It's almost white in appearance so it's a lot lighter than the other ones, than the other ones. but for the lighter portions of that flame I'm mostly going to be using um, just the regular yellow. I'm going to do a bit of blending uh, with my tutilians but also with a brush but I'm going to try uh, not to overdo it because <clears throat> as I examined uh, the reference uh, I realized that some parts of the flame are kind of 
how should I put this, uh, well defined in terms of edges. They almost uh, seem like separate, distinct shapes, but some parts of it uh, appear a little bit more smeared and transparent or translucent, uh, whatever the, uh, the proper term is. Uh, so uh, that's just how the, the fire is, that's just how the flame is. And uh, the, the thing is that uh, whenever you try to draw fire, uh, when you examine reference photos, when you re re examine still images, um, it, it's always quite a bit different than looking at an actual moving flame. So I'm going to do my best to render that in a realistic manner, and I think I picked a, I, I think I picked a nice looking reference for this fire. I'm going to try to enhance it a little bit by modifying its shape to my liking. I don't know if it'll be to your liking as well, but uh, I'm just going to change it a little bit. Now in the background here around the flame, because I'm still going to be working a little bit more around the fire, I'm going to add some other tones uh, because it's not going to be all black, obviously. I'm going to add some brownish tones and some and some greenish tones for the grass and I also added some uh, burnt ochre. Now the reason why I'm adding these uh, darker but warmer tones is because I'm thinking uh, the fire, the campfire, will be casting a bit of light onto the surrounding area, onto the ground around it and uh, the ground around it is going to be picking up some of those colors of the flame. So I'm going to I'm going to have a, a bit of those uh, yellowish and reddish tones uh, on the area around the fire itself. And I also want some of those greens to be visible in the background because, I, like I said, I, even though this is a darker scene that takes place at night, I don't want it to be all dark. I want uh, some some of those shapes and some of those colors to still be visible in the background because because it is a forest and obviously there's going to be a lot of foliage there's going to be some grass and things like that now uh, in the lower left portion of the paper i started uh, drawing some indications of shapes of some stones and rocks around the campfire and here on the left i also uh, used uh, some of these orange colored pencils to uh, add some of those uh, more transparent uh, flames to make it look like um, we can see a little bit more of the background through them. So I want some parts of this flame to be uh, a bit more opaque and others to be a bit more transparent, if that makes sense. And I'm going to use this yellowish orange for the main part or as a base color uh, for my fire. I don't really know uh, what the uh, what this exact pencil is called in the uh, in the Faber-Castell range. I, I just use it because uh, I thought that it would fit well into what I'm trying to achieve. Now notice also at the top part of the flame I also added a lot of these uh, dots and smaller marks to make it look like there are some of these fire particles flying around and to add a bit more to the to the realistic appearance of the fire and uh, burning wood. I'm also going to have some embers here at the bottom and I'm going to have some of those uh, some of those pieces of wood which are kind of sticking out of that campfire and uh, another thing that I added is I added a bit of that orange to the stones as well because like I said I want uh, some of those stones and some of the surrounding to be to, to be picking up a bit of that light that reddish and yellow light from the fire because the fire is uh, the strongest uh, source of light here in that particular part of the scene so it's going to be influencing it's going to be influencing the color and the tone uh, of all of the ground and the rocks and the grass around it. So I added some of the slightly more reddish tones to the to the middle part of this flame 
and I added, added a bit of that on the sides of the flame as well like I said I want some parts of the fire to be a little bit more transparent and the good thing about the good thing about sandpaper as a medium is that you can work from dark to light so uh, if I want to I can add some lighter marks on top of the darker areas which I just did with that bright yellow colored pencil or I can actually uh, use lighter pencils on top of the darker areas to make those areas just a little bit lighter or to add a slightly different tone to them but in that case I just use a, a little bit less pressure so uh, if you use a sharp pencil and use just a just a bit more pressure you can add some very clean lighter marks on top of the on top of the areas that you've already covered with a with a darker tone, with a darker pencil. This is not really something you can do on regular paper and if I try to do this on a regular paper this scene would be I think far more difficult to do and I also think that it would end up looking a bit less realistic. It would certainly be very difficult to achieve that, the appearance of those uh, fire particles which are flying in the air which are really small and it's it's very difficult to achieve that uh, clean edge and contrast that I achieved. I'm also adding some uh, brownish tones and some darker tones here at the base of the fire because I want to add um, some suggestions of uh, um, of burning wood at the at the bottom of that campfire. I want to make it look like some of those uh, sticks and uh, some of those pieces of wood are uh, sticking out through the fire now uh, they they too will be influenced by the color of the flame so some of them are going to be a little bit darker because they're kind of facing away from that flame others are going to be catching some light from the flame and they're going to be more uh, yellowish and maybe even reddish and orange uh, so I'm going to try to mix it up and uh, I think this contrast between the lighter parts of the flame and those uh, darker bits at the very bottom or at the base of the campfire will make for a nice realistic effect uh, which will kind of uh, convince the viewer that, the, that they're looking at a campfire. So I added another piece of wood here on the right which is a lot lighter because it's because it's burning and it's catching light from the fire and I'm going to make that a bit lighter than some of the other ones. Here at the bottom I'm using a little bit more of this cadmium orange which is like a more like a darker reddish orange and I'm also adding some suggestions of stones using a black colored pencil. Here and there I just uh, want to make it look like the campfire is surrounded by some of these smaller rocks and stones and uh, this is mostly going to be a combination of black and brown but I'm also going to be adding some uh, yellowish and reddish tones on top of that uh, to make it look like uh, the fire is uh, casting that uh, light onto the stones and I'm also going to draw some of the really bright uh, particles or embers in the in that uh, in, in those darker areas to make it look like some of those embers are glowing among the rocks and uh, and the wood um, there's really not that much I need to do about this I'm just kind of trying to refine the appearance of this uh, lower portion of the campfire a little bit add a few details here and there and maybe integrate the uh, campfire a little bit more into the into the surrounding but I'm mostly done with it <clears throat> and uh, and I'm pretty happy uh, with the colors so I'm going to be uh, finishing the rest of the background which is mostly going to be uh, done in the same manner as the as the background on the left so I'm gonna I'm gonna use a lot of black first and then later I'm gonna add some reddish and greenish tones here and there for the grass I don't really know how much the camera will pick up 
in terms of details and colors uh, these drawings always look a bit more detailed in real life but I still think that it's a nice looking scene and uh, maybe it will be useful to some of you if you want to experiment and draw something similar to that like I said I'm going to leave the reference photo in the description and by the way if you want to see longer videos you should check out my patreon because that's where I put uh, my uh, full length narrated videos and there's lots of content there uh, and also if you like my videos don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and comment because that means a lot for the growth of my channel and as you can see I've done pretty much all of the background and now I'm just refining some of the details on these uh, stones uh, surrounding the campfire adding a bit more of that warmer color to them and I'm going to add a few more of those flying fire particles around the uh, around the campfire I think it's a nice looking night scene uh, like I said it's uh, it's a drawing of a campfire but it's also a landscape at the same time I immediately liked the idea when I saw it first and it's very simple because right now I'm just adding some touches of uh, color into this dark area. I, I really like this contrast between the uh, well-defined elements and the more abstract uh, vague elements. I think that really helps to draw the focus of the viewer onto the elements that you that you really want to bring out, that you want to really want to bring into uh, focus. Uh, so this is pretty much the finished drawing. I'm just gonna use this orange to put my signature in the lower right corner and once again I want to thank you for watching and I hope that you found it useful or entertaining don't forget to check out my other videos and I'm gonna see you in the next one thanks for watching and bye for now